Gem Mountain is a unique sapphire deposit. It's actually one of the largest, oldest, and best sapphire deposits in the world. They've been mining sapphires here continuously since the early 1890s. You know, 125 plus years of documented sapphire production. Potentially hundreds of tons of stone. The primary use initially was the small, uniformly round BBs that we now throw away which were used as watch bearings. However, when we are mining, and even in the old days when they were mining, when they did find a stone with a nice natural color saturation, those stones were always faceted as a finished gemstone. And so all of the world's fairs throughout the turn of the century had an exhibit of Montana sapphires that all would have been natural colored. And then there's also a fair amount of inventory, primarily older inventory out there, of faceted gemstones that dis exhibit this distinctly green, frequently somewhat hazy color saturation. Many of these stones are large. They're frequently finished at one carat or larger in size. And they just don't look that good. And that's because the process was not perfected until the early 1980s. And it then took a series of, of iterations and, and basically an imperial process, almost like being a chef perfecting that recipe. Heat treating furnaces come in a wide variety of sizes and styles. Uh, the type of heat treating that's conducted worldwide could be an entire course unto itself. This particular furnace is manufactured by Thermal Technologies Inc. in Palo Alto, California. It's a vertical muffle tube design. In the base of the furnace is a 30 kVA single phase transformer. That's what will take our 220 volt current and convert that over to the super high amperages we need to generate the heat within the furnace body. We have two different computer brains that will control the rate at which the furnace heats up and cools down, how long it stays at temperature. We then have the ability to add particular process gases within the furnace body, which helps influence the color of the stones. This is the actual furnace body itself. The furnace has the ability to go to high enough temperatures that it could physically melt if it was not cooled. Inside the furnace body is an aluminum oxide tube that's approximately three feet long. The tube is within the center of the furnace from the nickel rings at the top and the bottom. That is where the crucibles will be loaded. Because it's aluminum oxide, it's impervious. And we will then be able to add process gas. In the case of the fancy burn, it's oxygen. And in the case of our blue burn, it's going to be a combination of CO2 and hydrogen. If you've ever done ceramics and you're familiar with the glaze, you will know that you can influence the final color through either the oxidation or reduction of a mineral. And that is, in layman's terms, what we're doing within the sapphire as we're heat treating. The stones at Gem Mountain exhibit an unusual morphology for sapphire. Many deposits, the sapphires will be broken or angular pieces. A lot of the older technical literature written about the shape and, and the surface texture of the stones here at Gem Mountain talks about water-worn pebbles associated with the turn of the century mining that involved hydraulic mining and sluice boxes with the stones being recovered from a stream. In reality, with the hardness of nine, the corundum crystals probably were not rounded off uh, through fluvial action. And what has been determined here in the, the last few years of research is that the unique round shape and the almost sandblasted surface texture of the stones are resorption features that as the stones were being transported to the surface via volcanic activity, they were dissolving. You need to keep in mind that the stones were not melting. The magma was not hot enough to melt the sapphire, but it was the low aluminum concentration in the magma that caused the stones to start to dissolve. In general, the results you achieve in heat treating follow the visual appearance of the rough stone. If the stone has a yellow hue to begin with, it's going to more than likely end up 
yellow after heat treating. Uh, if a stone is pink, they typically remain pink, and most customers, particularly of the female species, are highly desirous of that pink stone. We frequently do get requests to heat treat cut stones. We can do that, we can improve the clarity, we frequently can improve the color, but unfortunately, approximately one-third of the time, the orientation of the stone is wrong, and you'll end up with what we call a bow tie, where we'll have color saturation on two opposite sides of the girdle with a different color down the core of the stone and in the pavilion or culet. The heat treating is, is conducted primarily to improve the looks of the stone, and the better the stone looks, typically the more valuable it is. When we find a stone that exhibits good natural color saturation, we always suggest to the customer that they facet that stone as a natural. Not just because it has a little more value, particularly if it's a larger stone, but because the heat treating is conducted on purpose to change the color. And if the customer likes the color of the stone the way it is, then don't heat treat it, because it will change. The heat treating I do is considered natural within the industry, that we do not add any chemicals or fluxes to influence the color, and that the final color of the stone will, from a scientific perspective, be determined by the natural ratios of primarily iron to titanium within the stone. The vast majority of the rough sapphire here at Gem Mountain is predominantly a, a green color uh, when it's found. The heat treating process finishes the chemical reaction within the stone to create the darker color saturation that most people prefer within a finished gemstone. Starting yesterday, we completed a high temperature fancy burn, which is placing the sapphires in the heat treating furnace, raising the temperature to approximately 1,400 degrees centigrade in an oxidizing environment. We use pure oxygen in this case. The result of the fancy burn is, many of the pale green sapphires pick up a distinct yellow hue at this point in time, one of the most tedious parts of the heat treating process is the color sort. We examine each stone that has an indication of orange or yellow color, and then frequently have to orient that stone so that we can look into the center to determine whether or not the color saturation penetrates deep enough to create a beautiful finished gemstone of that color. After the fancy burn, many of the rough sapphires will exhibit some sort of color saturation on the two opposite ends of the stone associated with the C axis, would be the lengthwise axis as the crystal was growing. This is an example of a, a stone exhibiting a slight orange color on one side with very little color saturation on the other side. And when viewed sideways is a third color yet. Sapphire is a dichroic gemstone, and in this case we're picking up a distinct green. And if we notice where we saw the orange spot on one end of the stone, there is little to no penetration of that color saturation into the body of the stone. As a result, even though this stone gives a hint of having a nice orange color, it is not an ideal candidate to select for faceting. As compared to a stone like this, that exhibits a much darker, and larger color saturation within the zoning. That saturation is present on both sides. And when viewed sideways, penetrates from one side of the stone to the other with just a slight clear zone in the center. Based upon the shape of this stone, the pointed end can become the pavilion. The flaw can be removed off the top of the stone and any unusual zoning around the perimeter can be removed in the faceting of the girdle. And what I'm going to do at this point in time is go through the crucible, pull out everything that to me has a decent color, and then I will need to grade those stones individually to determine what the depth of that color saturation is. I have a beautiful collection of stones that are exhibiting on the surface what appears to be good color saturation, and unfortunately, in my opinion, just do not have the depth of color saturation or the color itself does not penetrate deep enough internally to the stone to create a valuable finished gemstone. 
So we're going to return those to the crucible and turn them blue to teal blue green. There are actually three different morphologies that I see in the crystals themselves. In this particular case, this stone is what we would call a flat tab. Again, slaying for a stone that is relatively thin, tabular in nature, frequently exhibits the good hexagonal crystal habit of the natural corundum crystal. And in this place, this specimen's rather nice in that it has a full-sized triangular-shaped growth plate. One of the biggest battles would be stones that exhibit pink, but it's hazy, they're silky. And that's where it really becomes a judgment call as to whether or not the stone will benefit from heat treating. If this was my stone, I'd pull it. have an interesting purple color, very, very rare, with a nice orange core in it. Um, but the, the fear in this case is that the customer won't be happy with the color saturation or the fact that when it is faceted, it might have that muddy look to it, particularly with the purple. This is another challenge that occurs periodically in the grading of, of heat-treated rough. I've got a stone that if I were to facet it for my inventory, I would probably pull it. It exhibits good clarity. I can easily see my finger through it on the back side. It's got a fairly nice yellow color saturation. The problem being, it's one of the two largest stones the customer has. And unless I know them personally, most customers have this preconceived notion that all sapphires are blue. So in this case, even though I would probably facet this stone for store inventory as a yellow because they're so rare, I'm going to go ahead and heat treat it to, to turn it into a teal blue green simply because it has some, some grayish green coloration around the outside of the stone and I want to try to maximize the value of that finished gemstone for the customer. We have stones present that have previously been heat treated using a flux method uh, that I do not condone or partake in. You can identify those stones because the surface features of the sapphire have physically been dissolved. The stones are very smooth, they're very slippery. You can actually feel almost a soapy texture on the stone with your fingers. And if it's a well-rounded stone, they're very difficult to pick up and very easy to shoot across the room. This is an example of a previously heat treated and faceted stone that we're attempting to improve the color on. Because it's exhibiting a muddy color saturation, has this greenish gray appearance to it, but when oriented in certain directions, has a fairly good looking yellow color. The reason is because the stone was heavily zoned. And that's actually what I'm evaluating during the color sort of the rough stones is many of the stones after a fancy burn will exhibit a yellow color on one end. And I have to physically look at the center, or visually look at the center of the stone to see how deep that color saturation penetrates and hopefully have that color saturation go all the way through the stone. The reason this particular cut stone appears muddy is the pavilion, particularly the culet portion of the stone, is yellow, has a very nice and attractive yellow color to it. However, the top half of the stone is a distinct blue, actually a rather attractive blue, when viewed sideways. Unfortunately, the yellow and the blue do not mix well and are giving that grayish green appearance through the table. In this particular case, we are going to hope that the yellow color disappears and becomes clear and that the top half of the stone that is blue will pick up enough color saturation during the blue burn in the heat treating process that the entire stone will appear blue. Another example of a zone stone, pale yellowy orange, culet, light blue uh, for the crown, the main body of the stone. Mixing of the colors, just not attractive. Here's a stone that has great potential. Muddy yellow color is indicative of a distinct yellowy orange on the, in the culet at the pavilion of the stone, with the top half of the stone being a nice blue. This stone, uh, I don't know if you can kind of see just kind of the hazy gray iridescence coming out of it. Titanium, it's going to be a spectacular blue. The question comes up is how do we keep all the orders separate? 
And we have a system. When we're dealing with large orders, for example, if I'm heat treating a large quantity of stone for the customer store, uh, I can use a high purity aluminum oxide crucible that can easily, in this case, hold about um, 3,500 to 4,000 carats. Uh, we have these high purity, larger sized aluminum oxide crucibles in a variety of, of sizes. So depending upon the quantity of stone we're heat treating, we can maximize our efficiency and not have a, lar a large amount of dead space in the crucible. When it comes to the smaller customer orders, I machine three different sized crucibles. In this particular case, we have a 19 spot crucible. All 19 spot crucibles have a single letter designator. We then use a counterclockwise numbering system of 1 through 19. And once you get the system down, it's pretty easy. Spot 1 is always next to the letter. Spot 7 is always directly opposite. Spot 12 is the end of the circle. We then move into 13, finish in the middle at 19. As we're loading the crucibles with customer orders, we keep a record on the job envelope uh, as to which crucible, which particular spot, and the number of stones that were loaded. Once the crucible is loaded, it's set aside, and we record a duplicate set of records in our logbook. All of these orders are tracked via computer with a written invoice and a detailed inventory sheet of the number of pieces, carat weight, and even individual stone weight on Monday after the blue burn is completed. Uh, a good 40 to 45 percent of these now green sapphires will be a very nice blue. Here we go. All right, we're safe. Perfect. Well, we should see what we got, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Blue. Nice. Fairly typical results. Uh, around 45% of the stones are going to come out a spectacular blue color. I know there's always a lot of discussion, you know, to heat treat or not to heat treat. Uh, in the case of our material here at Gem Mountain, there's just no question at all that the heat treating adds a tremendous amount of value.